Welcome back to New to Everyone. After a peaceful night, thankfully, of protests in Ferguson, Missouri, the focus now turning very squarely and most importantly to the investigation into Michael Brown's death. The grand jury is starting to look at witness statements, which are already beginning to contradict each other. Let's take a listen to just, here's a sample of it. What a brand new eyewitness, his name is Michael Brady, what he told our Anderson Cooper. Listen to this. Did you see him running toward the officer in any way? No. No, not after when he was running away. No, not at all. Like I said, uh, by the time I come outside, I'm thinking that he's now hit after I seen the officer shooting at him while he was running away. But this eyewitness heard off camera, this next eyewitness heard off camera right after the shooting seemed to see something very different. Listen. Running after him. What will these differing accounts mean for the invest investigation? What does it all mean as we're talking about this, especially since these have come out so publicly? Let's bring in Paul Callen, CNN legal analyst, to discuss, as well as Mo Ivory, attorney and radio personality, to continue our discussion. So, what do you make of this? I mean, this is just two, uh, Paul, two eyewitness accounts of the many that we're hearing coming out. But on this, can they both be accurate? No, they can't both be accurate, but it shows how uh, seeing something from different perspectives may uh, change your opinion about what you're seeing. Eyewitness testimony is kind of unreliable inherently. What surprised me about this, though, mm -hmm. last night, I was watching Michael Brady being interviewed by Anderson Cooper, and I said, boy, this guy's really believable. I mean, he's calm, mm -hmm. he's mature, he's not one of these kids who, you know, maybe you'd be worried that his testimony he wasn't accurate. He also said so. there are things he didn't know. He couldn't hear if there was a back and forth between them. He said, I was still behind the window so he was yeah. it seemed well, he was then, trying to well then also I, one of the things that he said that I think is gonna hurt him is uh -huh. about the shots at first he said no I didn't hear a shot fired at the beginning of the incident when the struggle in the car was taking place but then he kind of indicated that he knew other people had said there was a shot um, so you're wondering is he being influenced by what he's heard as opposed to what he saw so um, he's I think he looks to be a very good witness, but he'll be contradicted by other witnesses, and that creates reasonable doubt in a criminal case. What do you make? What do you make of, of this, especially this specific kind of this new eyewitness, Mo, and the impact that these conflicting accounts? that are now coming out can have on the investigation. You know, Kate, I don't find them to be so conflicting, actually. I don't necessarily agree that they are, you know, stark opposites. I think, depending on the time that these eyewitnesses came into view of mm -hmm. what was going on, it seems pretty consistent to me. The things that I see on the witnesses that have testified to seeing what happened that seem very consistent to me is that there was an encounter, uh, initial encounter. Then there was a running away by Michael uh, Brown. Then there was a shooting while there was the running away. There was a turning around and there was a falling. Okay. I see that to be pretty consistent between what this person said, what Dorian Dorian said. What I mean, I don't I don't see um, as much as everybody else does such inconsistencies, especially if you look at the time frames that these different witnesses came into view of the incident. Well, maybe here's then the important question that I haven't asked yet. What do you think is the important moment, mm. if you will, in this investigation to, to, to focus on in these eyewitness accounts. They're all telling kind of long stories from their memory. What is the moment that you think is the important one for investigators to be honing in on? Is it the tussle at the car? Is it the running away? Is it the turnaround? Which one is it for you, Mo? For me, the most important uh, part of this is what the excessive force used after the four shots. What seems to be very consistent is that uh, he, he was uh, now facing the officer after the four shots to the arm, and he was going down. The most crucial thing to me is why at that point did the two more shots come, especially the one shot to the head that was the fatal shot. Because we wouldn't even be talking about a death right now if we didn't have to examine though that exact moment. How much weight is put when you point out, uh, as Mo, Mo points out, that she doesn't think they're so conflicting. Eyewitnesses are going to tell a different story because they're going to tell a different story as they tell it. How much weight is put on these eyewitness accounts? I would say quite a lot since there are only a couple people who saw every, who were 
the, the two people involved have very different accounts of what happened. Well, this case is developing into a prosecutor's nightmare because Why? sometimes when you have too many witnesses to an incident, you know, so you're struggling sometimes to find a witness. Yep. In this case, you have so many witnesses, and a good defense attorney is going to create reasonable doubt by saying, look at all of the conflicts in the testimony. Even these witnesses don't know what happened. And what does the officer say? say he says this man, this six foot four, 300 pound man, ran at him with his arms out. Now, of course, the witnesses are saying that that was a surrender well, gesture, this, this but the officer's yeah. going to think yeah. it was an aggression well, yeah. uh, and act. Also and also, Michael Brady, so, this new eyewitness, he said he never saw his hands up. Yeah, and how does that square, obviously, with uh, two other witnesses, the two women who testified, they both had him with his hands up. So what these you, are direct contradictions When you testimony. take all of this into account, Mo, as, as Paul's laying out, what do local and federal investigators, what do they do with all of these accounts? They, they, sure. I read that federal investigators have now interviewed hundreds of people. Sure. Um, they gather all. That's why uh, you keep hearing that this is going to take a while. And, you know, I'm not against it taking a while because mm -hmm. I really do believe that they need to really find the consistencies. And it is a prosecutor's nightmare. I agree mm -hmm. with Paul. But I do think done the right way. And if you make the timeline, if you put all the consistent statements together, if I was a juror and I was listening to one person's testimony, because there's not many that are going to be able to account for what the officer did versus yeah. the people that have come out to say what actually they saw happen to Michael Brown. I think he could have a very strong case. Again, our justice system is based on what 12 or however many jurors are permitted in Ferguson, Missouri, what they will think of the evidence. So it's very hard to decide all of us, you know, right now that this, the witnesses are bad and they're conflicting. We have to wait until we see what is presented. Prosecutors got to convince nine of 12 grand jurors that he has a case. Yes, and, in the uh, grand jury in right the grand, now. In, in the grand jury. And right. that's uh, that's the standard he has to meet to, to get an sure. indictment. And yep. then, and, and the prosecutor, he said that it could be mid-October is their target for when they would like to wrap up presenting sure. all of the evidence to the grand jury. So there and will be a lot the, to come out. Sure, and that's only that. the grand jury, case. And that's exactly, that's <laughs> only what we guess we can now call the first step to what we step. need to find out what then. Uh, we all have to wait for. Mo, Paul, thanks, guys. This is really interesting okay. today. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thanks. All right, we're going to have much more.